Yes, ma'am. You are recognized, ma'am. Um, a message, sir, or uh, my statement regarding the point of order. Message? Mga kababayan, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. Warakmatulahi wa barakatu. Madayaw, mayong adlaw, kaninyong tanan. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. The officials of the Office of the Vice President, as well as each and every one of our satellite leads, satellite office leads, were in receipt of a letter from the Chairman of the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability dated dated September 13, 2024, requesting our presence or that of our duly authorized representatives in today's initial deliberation with preliminary determination on privilege speech number 379. In view of the said letter, I am appearing before you today not only as the head of office, but more importantly as the duly authorized representative of all officials of the OBP. Simply because we have, do, we have not done anything wrong. There is no misuse of funds. If there are audit findings, we shall gladly respond to them before the Commission on Audit. And if there are legitimate cases to be filed, then we shall gladly respond to them before the appropriate courts. In relation to this, may I just say that I take notice of the opening speeches and um, nasabi doon, there is a determination of misfeasance, nonfeasance, and malfeasance. And... Um, those are cases that should properly be taken in the courts of law. What we are witnessing now is no ordinary legislative inquiry. This exercise is a well-funded and coordinated political attack. This much is evident from the very words of the privilege speech that prompted this inquiry. A speech that's simply meant to say, do not vote for Sara on 2028. It is clear to me that this inquiry is not about misused funds, accountability, or governance. Instead, it is solely aimed at discrediting my name and my office to prevent future political contests. I have publicly stated my reasons as to why I've chosen not to defend the OVP's budget proposal for 2025. I have narrated the issues I encountered in previous years, which can easily be confirmed by looking at the NEP, the GAB, and the GAA for fiscal years 2023 and 2024. Further, I have even shared the drama that transpired last year regarding the confidential funds. Hence, just as we have done last year, we again leave the 2025 OVP budget to the pleasure of Congressman Martin Romualdez. I am not asking for any special treatment nor am I asking you to uphold any tradition. There is no disrespect. All I am saying is that you have the complete freedom to do whatever you wish with the OVP budget. If you feel that all the documentary submissions are not enough, then by all means, wag kayo magbigay ng budget. Sa totoo lang, Hindi naman ang budget ang puntirya ninyo dahil napakadali naman magtanggal ng budget. What you are trying to do is make a case for impeachment. 
hindi naman ako kakandidato sa nalalapit na eleksyon. Hindi ako namumulitika. Ang ginagawa ko lamang ay ang pagtupad sa aking oath of office at campaign platforms na trabaho, edukasyon, at maya mapayapang pamumuhay. Sinabi ko na noon at ilang beses ko nang inulit na hindi ako ang problema ng bayan na ito. Ang totoong problema ng bayan ay kagutuman, kahirapan, illegal na droga, kriminalidad, terorismo, hindi nasapat na healthcare, kalidad ng edukasyon. Kawalan ng plano ng infrastruktura para sa disasters at marami pang iba. So, you may try to destroy me. You can skin me alive and throw my ashes to the wind. But let it be known, you will find me unbowed. I will continue to serve the Filipino people, no matter the personal cost or political intrigue. Having said that, I will not allow myself to be subjected to an inquiry based on an empty, privileged speech just so you can attack me and do indirectly what you failed to do directly during the budget hearings. I therefore request this committee to terminate this inquiry for its clear lack of any proposed legislation or substantive matter for discussion. Shukran. The committee cannot uh, rule on that because the committee already took cognizance of this uh, uh, privileged speech. Anyway, uh, we will now proceed. Uh, next, uh, we will recognize the Mr. representative Chair. from COA. Mr. Chair. A Congressman uh, Marcoleta. May I please raise a parliamentary inquiry? What is your parliam parliamentary inquiry? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. The rules of the committee says that this committee only acquires jurisdiction on matters of nonfeasance, misfeasance, malfeasance. And under Section 2, Mr. Chair of the Rules, there should be a prior determination whether or not these malfeasance, nonfeasance, and misfeasance are directly or specifically relating to the person's charge of this. Has this committee made a prior determination of this? And if so, when did it happen? And where is the order specifying that the committee has just reached a prior determination? This is very important, Mr. Chair, because the rules also says that after determining or making a prior determination, this committee will set an order. And that is the only way that this committee acquire jurisdiction over the person's subject matter of this inquiry. And that particular order of prior determination will set out the parameters. If I can make a comparison, Mr. Chair, in regular court, it is called pre-trial order, where the parameters of the inquiry, the presentation of evidence or explanations or allegations are limited to that set of stipulation. So considering, Mr. Chair, and I assume that there is no prior determination, I do not think how we can start the meeting today because we are supposed to observe the rules. I am referring to Section 2 of the rules of this committee, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to answer that, uh, Congressman Marcoleta, we have already ruled on the preliminary determination a while ago. Uh, medyo na late na po kayo. Now, with respect to the with respect to your uh, inquiry that if uh, we can uh, proceed with this, considering that uh, this is an investigation of malfeasance, misfeasance, and nonfeasance, 
let me walk you through uh, let me walk you ito, through the definition of a good government and public accountability it provides that all matters directly and principally relating to malfeasance misfeasance and nonfeasance in office committed by officers and employees of the government and its political subdivision and instrumentalities inclusive of investigations of any matter of public interest on its own initiative or upon order of the house uh, for the information of everybody this uh, the issue on confidential fund is a matter of public interest Lahat po tayo ay uh, interesado, hindi lamang po tayo, yung publiko po, interesado kung paano po ito nagamit. Kaya yun po ang dahilan why this uh, committee has jurisdiction over the subject matter. But Mr. Yes, Chair, Congressman uh, Margoleta. Mr. Chair, under Section 5, there should be a record of preliminary determination. It says that the proceedings in the preliminary investigation or determination shall be recorded through stenographic notes. What you were mentioning are motu proprio cases. I am assuming that this committee started by way of a referral because of a privileged speech delivered on the floor by one of us. And so this is the main subject matter of this committee meeting and to which we should first determine preliminary whether or not this committee acquires jurisdiction. And I demand a record of preliminary determination under Section 5 because it says, upon termination thereof, Mr. Chair, the chairperson shall issue an order which shall recite in details the matters taken up. So what are the matters taken up, Mr. Chair? I think we should be able to comply with these elementary rules as is specified in the governing rules. Well, considering that uh, we are still in the, we have yet to proceed to the interpolation, uh, we are still in the period of recognizing the resource person as well as the witness. Um, with that, uh, the chair declares one minute suspension. <laughs>